Hello, this is Dr. Evelyn Hill with Shades and Justice Podcast. Hey, we're glad you're here today. I have a different kind of a topic on today called Poetic Justice. And in just getting a definition for Poetic Justice, it is uh, in literature where the character that does good is rewarded for the good that they do. And the character that does bad Uh, is punished uh, with a twist of fate. Uh, And so often we don't hear or see the twist of fate that happens to individuals in our judicial systems here in America. However, I'm sure they do happen. Um, Just to give you a quick example of uh, almost poetic justice uh, incident here in America was Uh, A few years ago, we heard of an individual who was accused of murdering two people. That individual had lots of resources, a very high profile uh, court setting, um, and the uh, individual received an, an acquittal. In other words, they did not find him guilty of the crime. That didn't mean he was innocent or she was innocent or they were innocent. It just meant they were found not guilty. Very interesting language. I read that earlier today. However, that same individual a few years later did have to go to jail and serve several years in jail uh, for another crime that they committed. Um, So the same individual had uh, lots of uh, resources, both social resources, financial resources, judicial resources. He knew people, had influence over different people, but this time he was not acquitted. So uh, it's kind of a poor example of poetic justice, but I think you can kind of see what I'm saying. He got uh, away possibly with the uh, first crime that he was accused of, but the second crime that he was accused of, he did not get away with it and did have to serve some years behind prison. Well, that's not that good of an example, but an excellent example is in the Bible. In uh, Esther chapters uh, six and seven and eight, really, um, if you go back and read that, it's pretty exciting stuff. Uh, Mordecai finds himself at the gate of the king's uh, court and um, at one point Mordecai Mordecai had done uh, some heroic acts for the king that had literally uh, been forgotten about Um, and Mordecai also um, was being the father to his niece who was Esther and Esther of course was pulled into the kingdom when uh, the uh, Pharaoh decided that his wife Vestai uh, had to leave because she she did not honor him when he asked her to come and dance before his people. So uh, enters uh, Esther um, after um, they sent out men across all the providences to find the most beautiful women uh, in the pro province and bring them to the king's house. And Esther was one of those special chosen women. Well, the story gets better. She goes through the grooming stage uh, for several months. uh, And then after a while, the word goes out that uh, Mr. Haman hated Mordecai because Mordecai refused to bow down to Haman. And Haman was uh, pretty high up with Pharaoh. And because Mordecai refused to bow bow down to Haman, Haman decided he hated all Jews and he wanted them all dead. But why why even have Jews in our our kingdom? And so uh, Mordecai tells his niece, who is Esther, hey, maybe God allowed you to be in this place in the kingdom for such a time. Is this pretty Uh, ironic statement for this young lady. And I bet she thought to herself, it's just me, what do you mean? Uh, How could I save my people? But Mordecai was a very wise man. He spoke to her. She went on a fast uh, and began to fast and pray for three days and three nights, included other folks there in her community 
And they did just that. And then she went to the king and asked the king for a banquet. Now, the caveat is that you're not supposed to go to the king unless the king invites you in. But she took a step of faith. Come on, ladies and gentlemen. Sometimes you just have to take a step of faith. After you pray, you fast, you believe God, then you just have to walk out there and take that step of faith, which is what Esther did. And she invited the king to a banquet because he asked her, what do you need? What can I do for you? So the first night they have the banquet. She does a beautiful job. She looks beautiful. Both Haman and um, the, the Pharaoh are treated with such dignity and excellence and royalty. And so the king again asks Esther, what can I do for you? And so Esther says, you know, I'd love to share a banquet just one more night. So they have another banquet. She invites them in. And then finally, out of nowhere, the king says, Esther, what can I do for you? And Esther starts crying. She says, please spare my life. Please don't kill me and my family and my lineage. Lin, uh, lineage. And so the king is asking her, oh, who would do such a thing? And then Esther reveals it was Haman. Haman has put this bill together, this legislation that wants all of our people killed. And please don't allow this to happen. Oh my goodness, the king got mad. He was furious and stepped out for just a second. And when he did, Haman pleads to Esther. And it looks like Haman's trying to take advantage of Esther. And then the king walks in on Haman begging and pleading Esther and, and the king's going, hey, what are you going to do? You're going to force yourself on the queen now also? And so the very apparatus that Haman built to hang Mordecai now the king, the pharaoh is demanding that Haman is hung on that piece of equipment that he built for Mordecai. Now that, ladies and gentlemen, is poetic justice. But let's share one scripture here. Proverbs 31 and 9 says, Open your mouth, judge righteously, and plead the cause of the poor and needy. What did Esther do? She opened her mouth. She used her influence with the king and Haman too and also use her influence with those in her community to invite them to pray and fast with her. And then this was a young lady of great faith. She not only spoke up, she was willing to die. Because remember, you're not supposed to go to the king unless the king calls for you. And she stepped out on faith and invited the king to the banquet. This is what you and I have to do. We have to speak up. We have to step out on faith. We have to plead the cause for justice. We have we have to do good. We we time out for being afraid to speak up, for being afraid to call those who are in error to let them know. This is excellent example of what you and I can do in our community right now when there are so many injustices done in our community to people of color, to people of low income, to individuals with no social or economic capital. This is our season to speak up for that which is just and right. Okay, thank you. This is Evelyn Hill, just another version of Shades and Justice podcast. Check me out at www.dr.evelynhill.net. Bye.